Well, folks, welcome back to VG News. We got five big stories brought to you today talking about some Metroid Prime 4 updates. We got some thousand year door updates as well for you Nintendo fans out there. And also some updates on major RPGs, including what's next for the Baldur's Gate 3 developers at Larian Studios. And even another major Western RPG was announced yesterday with 13 minutes of gameplay. Pretty amazing stuff here. So what are we waiting for? Let's dive right in with our first story. And we're talking about this brand new footage. Well, multiple brand new pieces of footage for Thousand Year Door. And this time it's all about Yoshi. She. Calling this a trailer might be a bit of a stretch. It's more so a small 15 second snippet. But still, Nintendo notes that Yoshi can float in the air for a moment to cross gaps and aid Mario in combat. Once again, we'll obviously show a little bit of Game Explains footage here as well because they quickly got to do a nice comparison between this game and the original release on GameCube. Not a whole lot's really different, but it is neat to see Nintendo continue to really push marketing for this game. And we have no idea what footage screenshots or features they will talk about next. But we're gonna keep you updated as always on VG News, which includes brand new footage that ended up being dropped this morning. And that's because they gave us 25 more seconds of footage over on Twitter. I didn't notice anything here that looks particularly new in terms of features, but the improved visuals are always a treat to look at as a fan of the original release. Also, it's interesting to see how different the Thousand Year Door feels visually to more recent Paper Mario titles. It doesn't lean quite as hard into the paper aesthetic while still clearly keeping it present. It's honestly astounding to me how much better this visually appeals to me than even something like the Origami King. And I actually really did enjoy the Origami King. So to me, this is all just a fascinating look at it. We're gonna to continue to get more and more snippets and trailers and details again we're kind of waiting to see if there's going to be any new content or new really big features, not just some of the quality of life ones we've already seen. So we'll just have to wait and see. But now what we don't have to wait on is this next story here because we're dealing with Play On. And yesterday, something weird happened. Their next big game, Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, had its gameplay trailer leaked online. So of course, they just went ahead and officially released it with a bunch of information. Now, this game is going to be scheduled to release later this year on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, and PC. And hey, this footage you're seeing is actually like 13 minutes long. We probably won't have all of it here in VG News, so we'll have it linked down below, of course, for you to go check out. Now, they do get some official details provided with the description of the game and all of that. So it says, diving back into the heart-pounding world of 15th century Bohemia, which is Central Europe, Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 picks up where its predecessor left off, thrusting players into the shoes of Henry, the steadfast son of a blacksmith embroiled in a tumultuous tale of vengeance, betrayal, and self-discovery. In this gripping sequel, players will traverse a meticulously crafted medieval landscape from the humble confines of a blacksmith's forge to the grandeur of royal courts, all while navigating the treacherous currents of a kingdom torn apart by civil war the game will take place over two maps making it double the size of the first game and then it says players can explore the beautiful and diverse bohemian paradise a real world location you can still visit today in the czech republic with the majestic trotsky castle and then visit an ermine environment of silver mining town in kutenberg a unesco world heritage site the game's combat system has also been revamped with new ranged weapons including crossbows and yes, even early gunpowder weapons. The first game did end up making it to Nintendo Switch as well last month, but this game is being made for all of the current modern day consoles and PC components, meaning that if we're ever to see this game on a Nintendo platform, it's probably going to be on Nintendo's next generation platform that we keep calling Switch 2, that we still don't know when that's going to come out. but. Since the first one came to Switch, there is obviously hope that Nintendo will get this as well. This Play On Games here clearly does care about full multi-platform support, and that is something that we always like to see with these third-party games. So I'm really looking forward to Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. I did really enjoy the first game, so having another one, hopefully it reviews well and they end up delivering, because you know what did deliver? Baldur's Gate 3. And when we're talking about RPGs, it's hard to talk about modern day ones without bringing up this DND based game. That's right. If you didn't know, Baldur's Gate 3 is actually based on a certain book series of 
Dungeons and Dragons. And Larian Studios went ahead and did something that people didn't really expect. They updated the Steam page with a rather lengthy post about the future of Larian Studios and also technically a little bit about the future of Baldur's Gate. Strangely enough, despite releasing one of the best games of the generation, Larian Studios is done. They're not, not only going to be releasing no new story updates or anything for Baldur's Gate 3, they're literally not going to be making Baldur's Gate games ever again. Obviously, it feels like to me something happened behind the scenes, but it doesn't really matter because Larian Studios had a lot to say in this update. So let's dive into what was actually said. Being given the chance to develop a game set in the Dungeons & Dragons universe has been a dream come true for all of us. But as Swen recently confirmed, we will, won't be introducing any major new narrative content up to the story of Baldur's Gate 3 or its origin characters and companions, nor will we be making expansions or Baldur's Gate 4. As an independent studio since 1996, we value the freedom to follow our creativity wherever it leads. In this case, after six years in the Forgotten Realms and much discussion and rumination, we decided to seize this opportunity to develop our own IPs. We're currently working on two new projects, and we couldn't be more excited about what the future has in store. It's still early days. We'll tell you more about those later down the line. But know that even as our focus turns to these new games, the sensibilities that brought you Baldur's Gate 3 are alive and well here at Larian Castle. We've fueled by the very same fire in our bellies that one drives us to create immersive experiences shaped by your choices, and we can't wait for you to join us on our new adventure. Now, this statement also included a message from Vinky, who says that he thinks the studio's future projects will be their best to date by stating, I don't know if we're going to pull it off, but looking at our narrative, visual, and gameplay plans, I think what we're working on now will be our best work ever, and... I gotta say something here. I'm really happy Larry on Studios is going on to create their own games and their own IPs that they have full creative control over. I think that's obviously a really big step for a studio, taking that next step in the AAA space. What I also find fascinating is, look, Baldur's Gate 3 is literally one of the most successful SRPGs of all time, if not the most successful one. And on top of that, it's obviously still taking gamers by storm to this day. And... I gotta say that it is surprising that while they are making their own original games, that they also aren't really gonna be, not just not making new DLC, but not making any more Baldur's Gate games in the future. I, I find this to be obviously a risky move for them, but also for people who loved Baldur's Gate 3 to know you're not going to get another game like that because I'm just gonna be quite honest with you, no matter what happens with future Baldur's Gate games, it's never gonna feel the same as when Larian Studios made it. Let, let, let me give you an example. Remember when Bungie stopped making Halo? Yeah, Halo really hasn't felt the same since Bungie was no longer involved. Same thing here with Baldur's Gate. No matter what happens with the future, it's never going to quite feel as good as it did in Baldur's Gate 3. So if you love that game and you love the Baldur's Gate franchise, really just enjoy what you have because you may never get anything close to that again. Heck, look at a prior story. We talked about the Thousand Year Door. We haven't had a Paper Mario like that game since. So sometimes you just get these one-offs that are masterpieces that... That's all you're going to get. I obviously look forward to what Larian Studios has happening next. I hope they use all this experience to develop a unique IP that is, you know, just wonderful and amazing. And they're obviously going to get a lot of attention whenever they decide to reveal both of these games. Hopefully they can deliver. We'll see what happens. You know what we've also been waiting a long time for? Updates on Metroid Prime 4. Now look, Metroid Prime 4 has been in development for a very long time. Originally announced in 2017, rebooted, as far as we're aware, at least at the very beginning of 2019, if not in 2018. And it's being ran by Retro Studios now, and that's wonderful and amazing. Retro Studios was actually the company that was behind the Metroid Prime remaster. We obviously know they made the original Metroid Prime, but they handled the remaster of Metroid Prime themselves. So look, it's why they consider one of the best looking games on Switch, and it's just created a little bit of extra anticipation. Following Metroid Dread, Metroid Prime Remastered, we all wanna see Metroid Prime 4. And we don't know if it's coming out this year. It might not, it might not come out until 2025, but we do have an update on the game. And this is thanks to someone who I'm just gonna say is one of the best hiring and LinkedIn and whatever you wanna call him. He's one of the best employee sleuthers 
<laughs> out there in Doctray81. And you should definitely go check out his video. He provides additional context. But we're going to look at one particular part of his video, a image that he shows of somebody who supposedly no longer works at Retro Studios, but they updated their profile on the way out. Their contract likely just completed. And here's what it said they did at Retro Studios. They combined H. LSL Houdini game editor scripting and C++ coding to create complex visuals. They authored HDAs to procedurally generate data encoded models and textures, flow map simulations, etc. They created interactive environmental effects, rain, steam, lava, shot reactions, visor effects, etc. They collaborated across disciplines to make sure game worlds come to life with details and flourishes. And then he notes that I hope players notice this. And then he specialized in authoring energy-based visuals, hologram, force fields, projections, sci-fi glass, etc. And then they optimized game content to help our projects, not project, projects maintain 60 hertz on Nintendo hardware and then it notes the games he worked on was metroid prime remastered and metroid prime 4 so when he says projects those are the two projects this person was involved in 60 hertz is obviously something that we may have expected because again metroid prime remastered at 60 fps prior metroid prime games at 60 fps but some people have thought you know if metroid prime 4 is really going to be pushing the hardware then maybe they target more of a 30 fps on switch and then maybe 60 is something you get on the next generation system what i find fascinating is part of the reason we think this is because of rumors that exist out there from special nick from the xbox era podcast where he talked about and likened what was apparently seen in a demo by Retro Studios, part of the Metroid Prime 4 world that looked almost as open and vast as Halo Infinite, which Halo Infinite is an open world game. Now, Special Nick was careful to say that, hey, that doesn't mean that you know Metroid Prime 4 is open world, but clearly the zones must be pretty massive. Now, again, this is still just a rumor. It hasn't been substantiated by anyone. And then we have Jeff Grubb out there talking about how there was supposed to be some sort of Metroid showcase or event or some sort of thing i don't know he didn't give a lot of details on it that he said it is maybe a bit more likely because the same person that told them that also told them about epic mickey rebrushed including that exact name so i find that to be pretty fascinating but those are all rumors this is actually something that is from a former employee at Retro Studios noting this. And again, it's sort of minor information. I mean, you can try to dig into what all those technical details and little special effects he did, but without a visual representation, it's hard for us to really fully grasp the work that was done there. But what I do find interesting is the 60 hertz. It does mean the game is targeting 60 FPS. I've actually seen people take two different sides of the fence on this one. Some people actually not being happy that it's 60 FPS because they think the visuals will be compromised because of that. And then I see people happy it'll be 60 FPS. Now I'm gonna tell you where I stand on this because I obviously really am looking forward to Metroid Prime 4. I'm glad it's gonna be 60 FPS because to me, gameplay trumps visuals. Could they get a little bit more visual quality with less FPS? Absolutely. But based on Metroid Prime Remastered, I'm not necessarily worried about how good the game's gonna look. Now, when I say good, it's just gonna look good for a switch game not compared to playstation 5 xbox series or pc but i'm good with that i think that this game has been developed for the ground up for switch it's going to be the coup de gras the the swan song triple a game from nintendo that's really going to showcase the full technical limitations of what switch is capable of and i'm glad 60 fps was a goal and a target because again Look, any sort of first-person style shooty shooty game, which is what Metroid Prime can be at times, needs 60 FPS in my opinion. I know we've, we've had 30 FPS with other ones, but 60 FPS is such a smoother, more fulfilling experience. So I'm glad that that is apparently what has happened, and we'll just have to wait and see when we actually get like to see this game. That's what we're waiting on right now. Now, our last story is just sort of a quick update for Universal Parks in Japan because there was an announcement by the Universal Japanese account, their, their ride account, etc., their theme park account, I guess is what I was looking for on Twitter, that basically said the following, the Donkey Kong expansion theme park has been delayed from 
spring 2024 to late 2024. Now, we don't know why it was delayed. Of course, we know that we've seen them with video out there of them running test runs of the actual ride and all of that. Uh, if I had to guess a, a six month or more delay like this, usually it's because of something pretty major. If I had to guess, especially with the delay being announced now when we're like practically in spring, I think that this really had to do with some sort of major change that needs to happen. Maybe there's a significant flaw, as an example, in the cart ride that's going to require complete mechanical and engineering redesigns that are just going to take that long to implement. Or it could be something else entirely. Maybe it's just a staffing issue. Maybe there's other problems. I don't really know. But what I do know is I am okay with the delay. Uh, it's easy to be okay with it when I don't live anywhere near Universal Japan, so I probably wasn't going to end up going to this anyway. But whatever, we only have to wait about six or seven months. Either way, by the end of this year, people will still get to go visit the Donkey Kong world in person, and that's what's important. It's not like it's been canceled or anything. Look, delays happen. Uh, the only thing I'm hoping doesn't get delayed is my cruise this June, which, you know, you might go, well, why would you worry about that? Well, you know, we are cruising in the Caribbean. You know, if there's a hurricane coming, we... Obviously, the cruise is delayed, so uh, that's one thing we're hoping isn't happening. But for now, thank you guys so much for being here. You guys are epic, awesome, and amazing, and I love all of you. Let's have an amazing weekend coming up. Probably a, a few surprise videos or bonus videos over the weekend, but you guys rock. I love you. See you for VG News on Monday, live stream Monday as well. Oh, there might be a little something happening tomorrow.